Talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, either I respect that. If she be down the ride, no, oh, I bet that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How you doing, Postal Family? Everybody good? Everybody cool? Everybody clean? Everybody crisp? Everybody iry? What's going on? Hey, check out my other channel with Miss K. Go give it a subscribe. You never hear me use those words, but that's what I want you to do. The information of that will be in the video description. Let's talk for a second. I made a video about the career versus non-career salary versus hourly pay. And there was a couple of people that said, no, I was giving misinformation. Well, no, I wasn't. Because there's one craft that doesn't get paid the same way as everybody else. And that's the rural carriers. Now we have over a hundred crafts here and that one craft gets paid differently based off of route evaluation and how long and X amount of hours. If they work a, uh, a route and it only takes them five hours to do, but it was scheduled for 10, they still get paid the full 10. But here goes, this is going to affect everyone eventually because of the analysis. Let's give a little backstory, shall we? As we clearly know that Mr. DeJoy is finding ways to cut wages, but he can't. What's the best thing to do? Is cut money that's being given unnecessarily. You guys may have heard me speak about lazy workers or workers that are getting over in the system. Hell, you ain't had to hear me talk about that. You guys talk about that all the time. Wondering how these guys are just sitting there for three, four hours and getting away with what they're doing. Well, eyes were watching and now I believe this is the beginning of a full domino effect for everyone. But this is what I gathered the other day. Oh, According to the system, they have been evaluating routes for quite some time. This is as far as carriers are concerned. Now, again, this is going to go for everybody. Let me just give you according to the rural carriers and you'll see how this plays with every craft. The rural carriers, they get their routes evaluated and they'll say route one takes approximately nine hours. 0.5 hours to run that route. We're going to pay this individual 9.5 hours for that specific route per day. If this individual goes under, they still get paid the 9.5 hours. So what's happening is, is that they evaluated these routes a long time ago. What's wrong with that? Well, things have changed. Yes, they've changed. And See, I, I know a few cocky rural carriers and I'm cool with them, but what's happening is, is that they leave and they go do their route and they're back within two and a half hours. So instead of them working their 9.5 hours, they're only working four hours, but getting paid for 9.5. Sounds like a steal. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's a steal, according to the eyes above. Now there's probably gonna be people saying, but what about my car breaking down? What about the inflation? Listen, as a business owner, he don't care none about that. And, and I understand that. His job isn't to really take care of you, Mr. Rural Carrier, you, CCA, you, MHA. His job is to make sure that the whole company as a whole is still going so that everybody has a job. It makes sense, it makes sense. Back to what I was saying is, they did uh, an evaluation of all the routes in the country that are rural and they realized that 70%, 70 percent seven zero 70 percent of the routes of the rural routes are going to be losing time after they evaluated they said we're not gonna give these people no more money you come back at two o'clock in the afternoon hey that's cool but that just shows Every single day that you've done that, they created that log and said, you know what? Why pay them nine and a half? We only need to pay them five and a half. 
We're not going to give money away for free. Hell, you guys don't give money away for free. Well, I understand that. What does that mean for you? That means you're going to be losing money. Or they're going to be combining route. You're going to up oh, this is the one that's going to say, but what about all the Amazon we gained? Yeah, all the Amazon we gained. We're losing Amazon. We're gaining Amazon. We're losing Amazon. We're gaining Amazon. There's no way to really please everybody because there's a lot of people that say, hey, I hate Amazon. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And then they turn around and start taking Amazon away from you guys in your city because you see all the Amazon vehicles riding around now. And then you're like, well, where's my work at? Well, if they take work away, that means they're going to take money away. That is a big whopper. Think about that. 70 out of 100 rural carriers are going to be losing money. Pretty much. 700 out of 1,000 will be losing money. 7,000 out of 10,000 rural routes are going to be reevaluated and people are going to lose money. Now, the Rural Carrier Association, the Rural Carrier uh, Union did write a letter and it said preliminary evaluation results. The National Board has been given preliminary results for the first RRECS evaluation as you can see based on the graph they we were given approximately 66 percent of all routes lost in evaluation and six percent stayed the same 28 percent gained in evaluation as you can see the usps has not provided us requested information to verify the accuracy of these numbers we were left with no alternative but to file a step four and unfair labor charge as soon as we receive additional information, we will share it with the membership. Now, that's what a union is supposed to do. A union is supposed to fight to make sure that everybody has fair wages, which is great. But what happened when the union was supposed to be there while we were going through these changes? It's like closing the barn door after you let the cattle out. Does it does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. You guys could have been doing stuff straight through it in order to prevent this versus being reactionary, proactive versus reactive. Now, this brings me back to the whole union and finding out what's going on with all the new SNDCs, PNDCs, the ABCs and one, two, threes. Why is nobody stepping in right now to get all the information that's necessary if they're there to protect the workers? before the foolishness starts with everybody because this is just one step of cutting can you imagine that can you imagine 700 out of a thousand workers are going to get their pay cut cut and then well it's, it's good to be able to rush through a route but if they're no longer mounting and dismounting or whatever happened with all of that I don't really know what you guys do. Somebody going to say, you're right. You don't know what we do. So you can't make a judgment call. Are you right? I don't. But I know 10 years ago, I didn't see all the rural carriers back at their stations at two o'clock in the afternoon. I remember seeing them come back at five, six o'clock like everybody else. Now they're just linked. Man, it's a 12 in the afternoon. Are you done for the day? All of that stuff that I see. And I'm just a truck driver. Them people up top see. You kind of shot yourself in the foot with that. And it's a daily thing. Now, this is not nationwide that everybody does that. They did clearly say 30% of the routes gain more evaluation. That means maybe more businesses along the route or more homes were built out in the rural areas, whatever it is. I'm not a genius. I'm not one of those that does analogous. Analyst. Analytics. Uh, analysis. Uh, you know what I'm saying. What does that mean for everybody? Everybody's going to have an effect eventually. Because I know that with us, we're losing stations as truck drivers. So if we lose a station, what happens if we lose two stations, three stations, four stations? Well, if that's part of my route, they're not going to continue to pay me to go to a station that's non-existent. Does that make sense? Why are we paying this truck driver to go over to College Park Station if College Park Station is no longer there. That was part of his route. We're going to have to reevaluate his route 
either give him some more work or cut back. The difference between career people and the world carriers is they're not evaluating our routes and cutting us back under 40. No, they're just going to add something, switch something. And if they don't have anything, they may just make people uh, unassigned regulars, which happens. But as far as the rural carriers, no, they're either going to add more stuff to your route or you're just going to get paid. Instead of getting paid your, your 48 hours, you might get paid only 38 hours, 37 hours. The time for beating the system is over. This goes for all the lazy people too. Now that shouldn't affect anybody that watches me because none of you guys are lazy, right? Right. Well, all the lazy people that say, hey, I got a bid in the morning doing X, Y, Z. Whether you're a mail handler and you say, oh, this is what we got going on. We're supposed to be gathering all the mail that's going to College Park Station. Well, they don't need you to go gather the mail to go to College Park Station anymore because College Park Station was closed and their carriers are now at your facility. What happens then? They find something else for you to do. Same concept when it comes down to the processing clerks. You don't need to go and process all that mail and get it in GPCs to go send it out somewhere. No, they continually do it. So there's no real rush. Might cut back on your overtime because it's a continual cycle because they're right there inside the building. Everybody's going to get affected one way or another. Every single person. So I hope that those that, I don't even know why the rural carrier is taking digs at me. I'm here for everybody. But for those that don't know, just pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to what's going on. If you feel laxed or you feel like you're getting over on them, don't. Don't. Now, again, a lot of people that watch me are not those people. A lot of people that do, well, actually, no, no, because there's managers and supervisors out there watching me. Hey, what's up? The need for the unnecessary worker is coming to an end and it's coming slowly, but sh actually fast. And again, don't be mad. The unnecessary worker is no longer needed. That's none of you guys. Of course not. But with all that being said, I hope that this gave you a bit of uh, back information. It was really no humor in this because people losing their money is not a good thing. See, I had to write down just a note from when the supervisor was telling me about what he heard at the meeting and all this other good stuff. And uh, I wanted to thank the one that sent me the information. She sent it. Uh, he maybe I don't even know what like, people just send me stuff. And they just wrote me last night. And I was like, oh, man, this is great. When I had to tell them, oh, it said last count was five years ago. Five years ago, 30 paid dismount, yet 90 to 100 and found dismount. Well, not take more time, apparently. I don't know. I don't even know what any of that means, but I do know that they're cutting back people's hours. There's going to be a lot of rural carriers upset. Is it still worth it? <laughs> it's worth it if you work. You actually might have to do more work in order to get more pay like everybody else more work more pay or actually getting paid for the time that you work but what do i know i'm just a truck driver this is jh and we out